In this lecture, we are going to learn how to control position of servo motor, either this metal gear or small servo, any type of servo that you have, using rotary encoder, either this PCB version or this type that you wire and attach some resistors. So when we rotate it, we control the servo motor and also display the angle on the LCD. I will provide you a code to simply control the servo motor without the LCD and if you want the LCD also it will be available. And we will use the push button switch so we can use it as a home to move the servo here or you can take action based on this switch to do something else when the switch is pressed. PCB version encoder for in case that you don't use PCB. First get from ground to the top of breadboard, connect it to the middle of the second side. You can also connect SDA and SCL to these two pins. So test, wait for two seconds and then clear the whole screen. Let me rotate this. As you can see it shows minus. If I rotate it to the right, the number will increment. I rotate it. It goes much faster. Hi, welcome to an Arduino step-by-step -step course by RoboJax. We can control position of a servo motor using the code, but many times you need to control it with a knob. There are two ways to control position of a servo motor. One is to use this type of knob, which is a variable resistor inside it, and or sometimes people call it potentiometer. When you rotate it, we are measuring the voltage. So this will be connected, one side will be connected to positive, the other side will be to negative, let's say 3.3 or 5 volts, and the middle will be measured and proportionally proportional to the voltage we move the servo and the other way is to use this mechanical rotary encoder so what is the benefit of this first potentiometer it has minimum and maximum so it will stop but this one continuously you can rotate it but in the software you can limit and say if the, some number reached, stop, don't do anything. As you can see right now, it is controlling this. Where we can set minimum and maximum and how fast this is responding. But this can go just continuously when it reaches 180, I, I blocked it. So it doesn't do anything. But if I go counterclockwise again, and this has, um, this is very, um, durable with comparing to a uh, potentiometer because a potentiometer is sliding on a carbon here and it will break very faster with comparing this to this mechanical switch which has just contact and it will be done like millions of times before it breaks. This is much better option but it needs a little extra wiring as you can see this needs three and this needs five and we have to also do some extra coding, but it's worth it. So the servo motor can be controlled either this servo, a metal gear servo with a higher torque, it will be the same. So this has a lot of application and the code that I'm providing you, so you can use that, or you, we can use this type of rotary encoder. I have video how to control it and display it using potentiometer or variable resistor. This is very easy. The link for that is below the video. But in this video we are going to learn how to use a rotary encoder. The one we, we just need to put three resistors here to make it ready. Otherwise there will be so much mess on the PC uh, on the breadboard so I do not want to do that. Or you can get this one with a PCB which has all resistors and everything clean with five wires. So I have prepared this with five wire. I'm going to give you the diagram for this and prepared this is ready just with five wires. This will be connected to 3.3 volts because we just need high signal and this 
uh, or this one. But servo motor needs 5 volts and then LCD needs 5 volts. For the LCD, I've connected it to ICSP pin. This is for programming pin, the last pin here. And for the servo, I'm connecting or powering it up from 5 volts. But many people skip the video and then they say it doesn't work. You need to install the driver for LCD and you need to install the driver for the encoder because the code will be very clean. We just use the encoder uh, uh, library, which I'm going to show you. And here is the wiring diagram for the PCB version encoder, uh, this version. First, we connect this pen, the first pen to pen 2, second pen to pen 3, third pen to pen 4 in order. And then the plus pen is connected to 3.3 volts, ground is connected to this ground. So this is done. For servo, the yellow is connected to pen 9, the black or darker wire is connected to ground, the middle wire positive is connected to 5 volts. You can connect external 5 volts if your motor is powerful or you're doing some tasks because it will overload the Arduino. So connect external 5 volts to ground and to servo and also make sure to connect from the ground to Arduino. For the LCD, ground is connected to this pin of ICSP or you can connect it to this ground. VCC 5 volt is connected here because this 5 volt is used for servo. SD is connected to A4 and SCL is connected to A5. If you're using this version, here is the wiring diagram. So this is the wiring diagram for, for in case that you don't use PCB. You can see we have three resistors. Two resistors is connected to this pin, one of them. The second is connected to the left pin. So just put it this way, it will be easy. The third one is connected to the third pin on the other side. And now these three resistors will be connected together and it is connected to 3.3 volts. Now the PC, this is done. From this middle pin, get one wire and connect it to the pin to the other side. This is for switch. We are connecting it to between A and B. And from here, it goes to the ground. That's done. Now these three wires, the right wire is connected to the third one. The left wire is connected to the second. And then the pin four is connected to the switch pin, which is connected to resistor. And here is the wiring for that with servo motor and, every, and LCD. And here if you want to use breadboard, same way, we have three, three pens. First get from ground to the top of breadboard, from positive to this lower portion to the red side. So this is all 3.3 volts and that's all ground. So this, this is supposed to be connected in here. So fix that. I'm going to fix it, but for this video, assume it there. From the middle pin, it is connected to ground, and from the switch, the left pin is connected to ground. This 3.3 volt is coming to this pin, to one resistor, another wire it goes to another resistor, and another wire to the third resistor. So all these three resistors can be 100 kilo ohm, as low as one kilo ohm. So we can connect them all together on one side, it is connected to the positive. Now, one resistor is connected, one side of the first resistor is connected to the switch, the second resistor is connected to the pin A, and the third resistor is connected to pin B. To prepare a rotary encoder, we have three pins, two pins on this side, and three pins on this side. For the two pin, from the right, get a wire and connect it to the middle of the second side. So this has three pin, the middle is connected to this one. And then get a three resistors, just tie them together. This will go to the positive, but for now, one goes to these two pin to the left, and the, the two will go one to the right, one to the left, because the middle goes to the negative. For the servo motor, which has three wires, 
you will not make mistakes. The middle wire is positive. The darker wire, if you see uh, black and white, then this is ground and the yellow is the signal. Here, I've connected the red, the middle wire, to 5 volts. The orange, the signal, to pin 9. And then the ground, the brown wire is connected to ground. For the rotary encoder, we have 5 wires. One is 5 volts, so this 5 volts, the middle which is plus, or the one in here which all the three resistors are connected, this is connected to 3.3 volts uh, in here. Then we have ground, the last pin, and also here I've connected the ground from the map, will be connected to the ground. Then we have three pins. The two pins on this side, these are for the rotary encoder and also for here, these two are the pin A and pin B. And the third pin is the switch green. So these are the two pin, it goes to pin 2 and 3 and here and the switch is connected to pin 4. If you're using this connection, the last one is connected to the ground. The second pin blue I've connected, the plus one, is connected to 3.3 volts. And here, then we have switch, pin A and pin B, whatever they call it, don't worry. So the, the last three pin will be connected to pin 2, 3 and 4. For LCD, I have a separate video fully explained this, but here ground is connected from this brown wire to ground. Second pin on the I square C. Red is connected to 5 volts. I connect this 5 volts here, male to female. So ICSP pin, the last to the, in the corner. As soon as you connect it, you will see the light will turn on, so you know you got 5 volts. And then we have SDA and SCL. SDA is connected orange, using orange wire, to A4. And SCL, the last pin is connected in here. You can also connect SDA and SCL to these two pins. I prefer that, but you can connect it in here. Please make sure to subscribe. I will have a lot of other videos controlling stepper motor, controlling uh, DC motors, and many other uh, items that can be controlled with encoder. I'm going to make videos so everybody can benefit from it. The only thing that you need to do is thumb up the video and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Let me now explain the code. The first thing we have to do is to install the LCD library. I will provide you the zip file, download it, and save it as in your computer. Then click on sketch, include library, add .zip library. Then browse to where you have saved it. For example, if it was inside your download, just go, select the zip file and click open. That is done. Next step, we need to install the encoder. Click on sketch, include library, manage libraries. Wait for this to complete. And then type here encoder. On the left side, you will see each section with a title. Scroll down until you see just the word encoder. It's alphabetically A, B, C, D, and then encoder. Encoder by Paul. And as you can see, it says installed. In your case, it will not be installed. And you will see the install button like this. Just click install and wait for the progress bar to finish and then close it. Then you're done. So this is the basic code that comes with the, exam the, with the library. Click on example, 
scroll down until you see encoder until you see encoder it says basic and then click to open it so here this line it says include the library encoder.h that's the header file and here they have defined the pen my encoder if you want to have one encoder you will put my encoder one and then like this and if you want to have two encoders my encoder two or something like that and these are the pens pen five and six they've used here for this purpose and inside the setup from here to here they just initialize the serial monitor with 9600 baud so if i click on tools serial monitor here you can select serial monitor to be opened and if i scroll down on the right side this 9600 is in here on the right corner and this is just a text and this is old position it remembers the position and here my encoder dot read this reads the position the encoder and whatever is a position it stores it in this variable called new position of type long and then here we check new position this is old position we check this new position if it is not equal to old position which is not true at the beginning it's not 999 if it is not which means uh, uh, you have rotated or changed it then we remember the new position into the old position so this is being stored in this variable so that is changed now and then whatever is the position we just print it once your code is ready connect your arduino to usb to your computer and then click on this button to upload it to the board and here is a demonstration of the basic code just click on tools serial monitor or click on this corner to open it now it says basic encoder i'm changing the pens to two and three let me rotate this as you can see it shows minus because i'm rotating it to the right and if i go to the left it goes the number increases if you want to change the way it behaves just make this three and make this two upload the code and now if i rotate it to the right the number will increment and if i go to the left the number will decrement even if it goes to the negative and here is the modified code that i used i have defined here pen a for the encoder pen b for the encoder pen 2 and 3 these are variables that are holding it of type uh, integer of constant so they cannot be changed and also i have defined switch pen pen 4 so this switch when i press it we can take action when it is pressed the same way this one has so it's the same and here inside the setup we say pen mode switch pen as an input so we define it inside the uh, setup and then the rest of the code is exactly the same except here we say digital read switch pen the result either it's high or low initially it's high because when it's, it's not pressed it is high so when it is pressed it will be low so we check if this is equal low this two equal means compare this value with a value low which is a constant which means zero if it is zero then it says switch pressed and we have 200 millisecond delay I, in the next uh, code that i'm going to explain i'm going to show you when the switch is pressed we move the servo to the position zero or a home position wherever we want to set it and here is a demonstration of the uh, updated code that i updated with the switch so let's press it it says switch press and if i press and hold it it will just print every 200 milliseconds it will just read it continuously you can also take some action but if you want to rotate it to the right you see the number is decrementing to the left incrementing and here i've connected now this other encoder let me rotate it to the right 
you see the number is incrementing because I've re uh, reversed the wires. If I go to the left, the number will be decremented. It goes 200, 100, and it goes even negative. If I press it, it perfectly functions and tells you that the button is pressed. And here's the code for the LCD. This is the same as the basic code, encoder is the same. I've just added here home position for the servo, 90. So whatever you want, this will be initial or home. In both cases, it will be used. So the servo will go at this position initially. Step value is the value how fast the rotary encoder you want to react. If you want 10 degrees every rotation, every move, every step, then put 10, otherwise make it 5 to whatever you want or increase it. It's up to you. The servo pin, I'm defining pin 9. Make sure that it must be uh, with a, it must have this tilde. It mu the pin you're connecting to servo must have this tilde. This means it is pulse width modulation pin. So let me show you. You see all these pins. Pin number 3 is pulse width modulation enabled. 5, 6, 9, 10, 11. If you connect it to any other pin like 7, 8, Two, four, the motor will not rotate. And then servo, this is part of Arduino IDE. You don't need to install anything. And from the servo, we define a servo object, my servo. And then we, get, we set the angle for the servo. Initially, we set the home position. So this is holding just the position at any moment. Wire is for I squared C for the uh, LCD and this is the library for LCD which we just included and from this class we create an object called LCD and we pass the I to C or I squared C address 16 means uh, 16 characters and then this two means two lines this one two lines this, I know the address 0x3f, that's the address, but you need to get the address by using the I square C scanner. So I give you this code, copy and paste it, and upload it to your Arduino. We don't really how it works. After uploading, just open the serial monitor, and here it reads the address for you. But if I, if I disconnect this, You will see it says device not found. If I connect it back, it will give you the address in here. You can also connect it to these two pins, SDA and SCL here. So here. It shows the address. I've connected it now to this pen. If you're using this type of Arduinos, the same way, it has SDA and SCL, and also you can connect it to this point, and also the ICSP. The SP pen is also in here. You can connect the 5 volts in here as well. But this one has extra 5 volts, so 1 5 volts, 2. So you might connect it in here. So we get the address, and here this line initializes the serial monitor for printing. This is the same as before for the switch. And then my servo attach, we are attaching servo pin, pin 9 or whatever pin you have defined. And this is writing the angle, the home angle or initial position, so it, the servo moves. This is for beginning the LCD, this is turning on the LCD backlight. This is printing the text. I upload the code, just wait. So it, that's the text and then servo test. There are two texts. And then we go, we set the cursor character zero, line one. We move, we move to the next line. And then we print servo test. Wait for two seconds and then clear the whole screen. And then we print again. Robojax encoder. This text. 
and then we go to the character 0 line 1 and we print angle the word angle this is the same as before remembering the position and this is reading the position here we are taking action we say if the new position is greater than old position which means we have rotated let's say clockwise then we get absolute value which means we are getting subtracting one from the other and we don't worry which one is greater so we get absolute value so we never get negative always we get some positive and that's the new step we want to move and this is just printing it on the serial monitor in here if I rotate it it is printing it and here we get the servo angle and subtract this value from angle step value which we set 5 10 or whatever it is every time we rotate it we subtract it and here this line is just taking care of it it doesn't allow it to go below 180 we check if the angle is smaller than zero which means minus or something the servo cannot go we just set it back to zero so this line is just preventing it not to go to the negative and this line is getting the angle and writing it to the servo so the servo moves to the angle that we have and this is also getting lcd angle and the same angle that goes since the servo also goes to the LCD, which I'm going to explain it. So this is printing it on the screen, this value. This line is the opposite. We, here we were checking it if it was greater. This line says if it is less than, then we do everything the same, except here we are incrementing it. And this line we were decrementing it, subtract, but this time, we are incrementing it and this line is taking care of it and will not allow it to go above 180 if it says above 180 then, then servo angle should be 180 and, and then we write it to the servo and then we write it on the display and now we remember the new position as an to the old position so it will be remembered in this variable this is taking care of the switch we are reading the switch if it is equal low which i explained it we print this text on the screen and then we say print home position whatever is home position let's say 90 degrees you, you set it at the top of the code and also we set servo angle equal to the home position if it is 90 the servo value will be 90 and then this value will come here and move the servo to that home position and also we print it on the LCD okay. if I rotate it let's say we have at some angle if I press it it will press home 90 on the on here and also this goes to 90. angle lcd when we pass the value here to this function this is a function which is at the bottom of the code and it gets this value which means we pass this value to this function and when it comes here that we call it now angle whatever it was as an integer so this is a function it starts from here and ends in here you see the square at the bottom so we have defined a new variable called start character. We start from character 8 and this for loop will go and put clear. So what it means is that after this, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. From here it clears all of them. So we set new value, clear, 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 nothing else. So previous value will be will disappear. Let's say you see 150. So 1, 5 my finger is here zero is there but if I go a smaller value now we need to clear that and move the sign in here so for that reason this is just clearing the step but starting from eight because our text is taking eight characters so you can put it smaller if you want you can put it seven for example and if I upload it now this will move one character to the left pay attention so now the, now it moved one character to the left so from here now we will have it and this line will set the cursor to print where to print it we set it at, at, at this start character which is character 7 line 1 line 1 means at this line and then we say lcd print angle this will print the angle and then this line lcd print 2223 of type character will print that 
angle sign symbol so it, this looks nice so you can read it as angle and that's it that was a full explanation of the code and here is a demonstration if you are controlling any of these servos depending on the speed you can control them faster or slower but in this case when I rotate this when it reaches 180 it will stop so it is responding very well on everything on the screen except this angle the, all the texts are staying there they are not updated except this number nothing is updated here I remove now the 200 millisecond delay I've connected this tiny servo As you can see it is responding that is 0 and that is 180 degrees and here I've connected this one with the resistor that I've attached to it thank you for watching this was how to control servo motor with rotary encoder please thumb up the video post a comment below the video in the description and uh, subscribe to my channel appreciate it in this lecture we are going to learn how you can control two or more servo motors using two potentiometers with arduino you will have independent servo controller for let's say for servo one or servo two together or, two, or up to six servo motors with arduino owner and of course with arduino mega you can 